going in. It's an incredibly vast room. Actually, a space so cavernous could hardly be called a room. It is also strangely barren, save for the alien object that dominates the center of the space. It resembles a giant floating eye. Though it doesn't seem threatening, it is still somewhat disconcerting. <coughs> the artifact of an alien civilization. The reason for its creation is beyond human comprehension. The core of the moon cell and the base of the seraph, the holy grail of the seven heavens, responsible for creating the seven seas. And in the space where the Holy Grail is enshrined, I can feel a sense of discord and dissonance. In front of the Holy Grail is a jumble of skewed stone pillars, which only adds to the tumultuous atmosphere. Wait, I swear I've seen this guy. On the top of that pile of stone sits the lone figure of a man. He looks to be in his late 20s at most. His expression is blank enough to be totally unmemorable, but as an NPC, he doesn't need to make an... Yeah, I've been waiting おめでとう。君が聖杯戦争の勝者だ。祝祭の一つでもあげたかったが、あいにくここにはそんな機能はなくてね。勝ち抜いた会話ないだろうが、私からの拍手だけで勘弁してくれ。でもこれだけは言える
It began when I was a student and obsessed with the history of humanity. I will never forget the many shocking realizations I received during the course of my studies. The betrayals that make up history, combined with severe shell shock, gave him an abnormal hatred of war. Allow me to clarify, by him I mean twice peaceman, and he was, in fact, incredibly ill. When he saw any image depicting war, he was overcome with overwhelming panic attacks. It was almost as if he would get severe heart palpitations and his blood pressure would skyrocket. From that day he, meaning me, was consumed with an unease that became almost painful in its intensity. Even after becoming a scientist, he still risked death to save others because of that unbearable pain. That's the whole of it. What drove him during his time in the mortal coal was not a sense of righteousness. What drove me was one simple question. Why was I the only one who seemed to hate war? As I said, Twice was ill. There was no reason for him to risk his life so foolishly on the battlefield. Why did I involve myself in war? Was it to understand it better, especially considering the effect war had on me? Even while struggling with those questions, my mortal self still irrationally kept going into battle. And in the year 1999, a horrible neurological disease broke out in a city located in the Far East. Wait, what? Based on the available evidence, the cause of the outbreak was a biological weapon created by terrorists. Twice was called to the city to treat the victims of the attack when he was caught in a major attack himself. According to records made available to the public, the death toll was set at 5,000 people. The moon self was the real count at 8,200. As you can see, the government underreported the number a tad. I can see the exhaustion in his eyes. He seems to think his story is no more than an amusing anecdote. Although it's hard to tell if he's amused by the government's possible cunning or total incompetence. Anyway, that's when I, no, the person I am patterned after, died. Twice ended up one of those 8,200. Something strange. I remember seeing the place where he died as if I too was one of those many victims. I can recall the sight of buildings set aflame, but when I was twice, it was a scene I had experienced before. It was then that the mortal twice, the person I was, recaptured the repressed memories of his childhood. In the 1970s, there was a clash of ethnic groups arranged by major powers as a war by proxy. Twice was orphaned in the conflict. The place I remembered was hell. Everything around me was collapsing. Everything fell without any sense of morality and without any acknowledgement of the value of life. And there lies its brilliance. The young twice must have concluded that life itself truly was a miracle. All that remained of that epiphany, I've already told you. Anyway, twice was adopted and became a doctor. And although I tried to forget the past, that one fundamental, tr fundamental truth was burnt forever into my soul. Twice despised war more, and it became his intent to kill war itself. I got involved in war in order to end it. However, at the core of my very being wasn't a denial of of the meaning of war. It wasn't that at all. Twice had seen many battlefields, the never-ending hell, the horrific evil perpetuated by humanity. A group of soldiers made to fight against an army many times their size. That was far more experienced and supplied. Forced to flee from gorillas, a girl of five travels on foot through a jungle that few could hope to survive. Innocent victims of violence who rebuilt their village and their lives without the help from anyone. I find that odd. Even though I hated war, I saw a great deal of strength emerge from the conflicts I witnessed. Now that I think on it, the mortal me was the same. All of Twice's great works were born of war. The many revelations, the uncounted number of rescues. None would have happened without the hell that is war. All the mortal me really did was bring back a number of things from the depths of hell. And in the end, I was a victim of a terrorist attack. But as I was dying, it all came back to me. I saw the burnt fields of my home and recalled the tenacity that helped me go on, even as everyone else died. Yes, three seconds before my heart stopped, I finally received an answer to my question. It was never denial. What drove that twice repeatedly into hell was because I... I, who eventually fell victim to violence, could no longer war consider war the ultimate folly of mankind. Nothing can be hidden from the moon cell, and it records all it observes, including my final thoughts. As time went on, I was reborn as an NPC based on the record of my mortal life, just like any other NPC here. They may appear human, but are nothing more than puppets playing assigned roles. I was the same. However, you managed to gain self-awareness. But how? And why? Maybe interacting with so many masters combined with my skills as a spiritron hacker pushed me into consciousness. More likely, it was just an anomaly born from a single 
the impossibility. How it happened, I cannot say. However, once I gained true consciousness, the only thing I could do was act as twice peacemen would. The dream that I saw as I died, the ideal that existed only in my mind. I now exist only to make it a reality. So what was the dream that the mortal twice saw as he died? Endless war, of course. To see mankind engage in a grand war mutual extinction. He says this last statement in a matter-of-fact tone. There's no hint of insanity visible in his eyes. Naturally, and with some obvious sincerity, he can somehow utter such a statement of absolute madness. The future has been corrupted. That is the conclusion I've come to after studying the moon cells records. Anyone with a brain can see that the world is doomed. Humankind has long since passed its adolescent stage. Man is still maturing in the 1900s. A balance was struck between penury and prosperity, but it didn't last. The period of immaturity ended, but the golden age that should have fallen never occurred. You do realize, right? What has happened to the planet and its people should never have come to be. The spirit of mankind is stagnated, just as the world has. The future is rotting away like overripe fruit. When that fruit should be at its best, it has fallen to the ground. That's not the way history should be. That is how horrendous Leo described the world. A place of peace, stupefying stagnation, and entropy. But is war really the answer? Because it is the most efficient way for mankind to progress. Stability and stasis only act to preserve a species. If it is the object... If the objective of modern man is merely survival, then there is no reason for them to exist. In my previous life, a great many lives and resources were consumed for the sake of convenience. Why? What was the need for plus prosperity? Prosperity is an illusion and exists only for his own sake. I expect that you agree with me. Humans are capricious creatures that must feed on dreams to evolve. The preliminaries illustrate this truth. In an artificial peace, ignorant aggressors level in idleness. Humans can only mature after breaking free from their idleness. That seems to be the case for you. And now, ideologies are based on the details of an ignoble and forgotten past. That loss can't be overcome. I cannot allow such ideas to become the foundation of the next epoch of human civilization. Don't you agree? If the future isn't worth the suffering of the past, well, that would make man mere murderers. For the humans who lived in the distant past, the future that man is now planning cannot be accepted. The future that will be is a mistake. Humanity has not spent countless lives for the society that is to come. But we cannot reverse time. Since going back is not possible, there is no choice but to move forward. With that in mind, we will recreate the wars of the past and revise the history of the last hundred years. By having everyone fight in the war of survival, mankind's consciousness will be forced onto the correct path. By which has become a firm conviction. As the winner of the Holy Grail War, your existence is proof of that. Come again? Hold up a second. What in the hell is that supposed to mean? Rin looks at me with flames in her eyes of demanding an explanation, but I'm just in the dark as she is. Originally, the Holy Grail was a way for the Moonsoul to gather data. It didn't even have a name at first. The Moonsoul only wanted the best data samples. Having a war of survival was a good way to separate the chaff. Oh, what the hell? However, up until the Magi who made here, came here made excuses for their actions, but still killed, then fled. Truly an atrocity, wouldn't you say? Until I won, this world was buried under a mountain of corpses. What the hell? Wait, those stone blocks are... After all, being an NPC, I get the luxury of continuing on even if I die. I watched their fights as an NPC, and when I became cautious, I fought battles of my own, weak though I was. After several dozen fights, I finally reached this elevated seat. After that, my story becomes simpler. Manipulating the rules of this place, I created the Holy Grail War, a battle of survival from which only a single person may emerge victorious. I remade this world into a place where the limits of human potential can be pushed beyond one's imagination. And then you appeared, the weakest master in the tournament. You managed to defeat the king of the world. You were totally unsuited for this ordeal in the beginning, just as I was. As a nameless figure drawn from masses, you've become the one in whose hands is the fate of the world. Your soul has been tempered by crisis and conflict. Your new strength is a testament to the potential of man. When mankind reaches the heights you have, they will move forward, clearing a path for those yet to come. Now, it's time for you to claim the grail for your own. You've earned the right to show the world the true path. Shout out so that all can hear you say that war is necessary. That humanity can and must evolve quickly. Just input this one little phrase into the moon cell. Don't stop. 
After that, you can do whatever you wish. Whether you become a king or a god is up to you. You have my blessing as your choice will bring endless war. The wounds suffered by humanity after losing countless lives and endless conflicts run deep. And if the only reward for such suffering is stagnation, then humanity deserves to be cast into a new void. Some sacrifices cannot go unheeded. Mankind must be inflicted with wounds that they will never forget. I actually understand where you're coming from. As I remain paralyzed by doubt, Rin begins to speak, her apparently calm but laid by the heat in her eyes. Your story was interesting, but left one question unanswered. It's about you winning the war in the past. You never once mentioned making a wish on the Holy Grail. Why? Why have him make your wish for you? An excellent question. The answer is that I can't. If I touch the Holy Grail, well, my wish would be rejected. According to the Moon Cell, my existence is considered nothing more than an irregular data stream. I can fool the low-level processes, but if I access the core, I'd be seen as an NPC and immediately deleted. My victories would mean nothing. I needed a legitimate master, someone who can make my list a reality. Anomalous data would be deleted. What emotion did her words express? Her mumbling sounded very much like a dejected style. The girl beside me shuts her eyes for a moment and then directs her gaze at twice, as if to deny the obvious. That's why I stopped here. I've been waiting for years at the gate to the core, waiting one ID more than Upon reflection, I wasted a great deal of time. I was able to plant the seeds of war on Earth from here by manipulating and manufacturing information. But it was a case of too little and too late. Also, my methods were unreliable and on a s too small of a scale. Instances of terrorism and violence have skyrocketed recently. So you're the cause of it all. Sorry, one second. With full access to the moon cells records of my ability to divide the future, I can bring about Armageddon. Of course, I don't intend for everyone to die. I simply wish to instigate a war that anyone can survive. You can see it through the gate. There lies the moon core, an object made from the purest photonic crystal. The results of the simulations of Earth's future run by the moon cell are stored as light within the core. The one who reaches the core has the right to choose from the course of the future from infinite possibilities. I'm sure you understand now. Whoever claims the moon cell can manipulate reality as they see fit. This object, which envisioned an infinite number of possible futures, can reshape the fabric of reality. If what he says is true, then the Holy Grail can accurately be considered the mind and will of God. Nothing is impossible. It is truly an object of an unimaginable power with infinite possibilities. Yes, you do understand. It has many other names. The Photonic Abyss, Angelica Cage. Take your pick. You have earned the right to claim it as your own. Now, please proceed. Unleash the perfect storm upon the world to undo the life stability. Rewrite history as I have said. Twice looks in my direction, an expression of earnest confidence reflected on his face, almost as if he assured that I share his belief that war is the answer. This man, while despising war and violence, could not ignore the immediate results that war brings. This supposed comrade, who gained strength through fighting much like I did, clears a path for me. However, My answer onto this, everybody, my personal answer, is that... So, I mentioned that Leo has the issue of stagnation, right? Well, Dr. Peaceman here has the exact opposite. If there's too much war, no nothing created will remain. Too much ca- it's too chaotic. You need a balance, and this is just sheer chaos. This is just gonna make a grim darkness- a grim darkness of a future that is only war. Now. Now, in its defense, conflict and competition do kind of cause people, are in peaches to grow. I mean, I'm a, sma I'm, I'm a competitive Smash player. I get what he's saying on that aspect. And the, and the, and the will to grow get, and get stronger and to beat others, to beat others and to do the best I can is quite the, is quite the, is quite, is quite a motivation. But war, where people can die, where there'll be nothing standing? That's way too far. That's going way too far. This is not the answer. Even if war is a necessary element in the advancement of humanity, I still can't support its continuation. 
My reasoning is painfully simplistic. Lives would be lost in war. That's my only reason. I understand the concept of necessary evils, but I refuse to accept the reasoning for the existence. Now, the line of opponents that parade through my mind are dead and gone, and it will never return. I've experienced the pain of loss throughout this ordeal. That alone will always make me oppose war. Twisting the moon sails, filtering process into, holy, into the Holy Grail War is his way of starting a war on Earth. And as warped as his ideals are, my own aren't really any better. Even so, I can't really accept his views of war. Your conclusion is overly sentimental, don't you think? I expected that, but still, give it a bit more thought. No! Servant, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Do you think I'm evil and should be eradicated? You need... You need to be... Are you seriously trying to win me over? Don't waste your breath. I'm wholly committed to my master. Caster's reaction is totally expected. It's a relief to see that whatever the situation, she's always herself. Master, to be honest, I don't really think too much about the consequences when I kill. Even before I was a servant, I killed untold numbers of people. I might hold the world record for murder. <laughs> oh, please, Tamamo. Hitler, Stalin, and Mao exist. They've probably way, they've probably done way worse than you have. That being said, I still think you probably have killed a lot of people. So that's still... Not, again, I still wouldn't call that a good thing. I still wouldn't call it a good thing, but you seem to be willing to try and forge. You're still trying to be seeing the move on from your bloodstained path, past, so I'll help you there. So, uh, hugs. So how do I put this? I don't want to say something ignorant, like, I'd kill for you. The person I knew was gone. That man from the past who hated war about all, of all things has disappeared forever. And though I don't like even thinking about it, if you were to fall, then I'd never forgive the one who killed you. In this case, I must side with my master. No, I have to admit that you've always been right, Master. You need to live your life as you think best, my dear Master, and if anything happens, I'll deal with it. As for Servant, it may be on a totally different magnitude, but I will win. Her encouraging words erase any hesitation I had. All I can do now is trust in my feelings and move on. I don't understand. Unlike any other human, you are the embodiment of everything I believe in. That might seem to be the case, but even if we walk the same path, our feelings may be completely opposite. I must have died in the same incident in that took twice. However, I learned different lessons in my death. Sadly for you, you cannot escape. Only a single master may leave the Musa once they've made it here. Once the participants have been reduced to one, permission is granted to leave the Seraph. This is one thing I cannot change. The Musa has made this rule a fundamental requirement for entry. In other words, there's still you and me. As long as both of us exist, neither can escape this place. So there's no path open to you but the one that leads to the Holy Grail. And given your capricious nature, I can't relax yet. There's no guarantee your potential your shot will shine through. The world has reached its limit as well. Soon it will be too late to overcome the stagnation of man. However, twice piecemeal is wrong. If the Moonsoul automatically erased the regular data, I cannot go inside. Just like twice, if I pass through that gate, I will be eliminated. And if twice somehow wins, he will gain nothing. In the end, no one will win this fight. But even knowing this, I'm not bring it. I'm not big on brainwashing as it can end in self-destruction. But your spirit might survive the process. It doesn't matter to me if you resist. If you don't want your wish to come true, you'll have to defeat me anyway. And such is destiny. At the end of such things, this is the conclusion we arrive at. Now then, it's time to bring this chapter in the Holy Grail or to a close. To the victor goes the spoils. That is the way of humanity. Something that will never change. It is by fighting for one's life that a person's spirit will grow and become stronger. I may be, well be a malevolent force in regards to man, but life is an endless cycle that will never end. You need to be stopped. ムーンセルがその蔵書から私に与えた救いの姿来たれ救世の英霊この世でただ一人聖の苦しみより下脱した怪盗者よ。Who's this servant? Oh, shoot, that's... 
Prince Siddhartha Gautama, better known as the Buddha. Really? If it is for the purpose of creating the math, yeah. Sorry, one second. If it is the purpose of creating the path, mankind will follow to Dharmata and thus to enlightenment. Then I will come forth to grant salvation to all things and guide them with the might of my Vajra. Shoot, this is gonna be tough. Battle Tamamo. Let's go. The words of my servant serve to encourage me, and in the end, twice is right about one thing. There are some things that conflict can help to grow. And the most important to me is the bond that now exists between me and my servant. Regardless of the strength of the enemy or the consequences of failure we'll have in the future, I won't back down. I will face this one last battle with the one who has been with me from the beginning by my side. <laughs> 